And Sister Olive, you didn't tell us about the night creatures. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of sound. All kinds of sound. All kinds of sound. But God, I, 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 I just leave everything to God. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of those scaredy, scaredy. No. And Sister Olive, are you afraid of lizards? The croakers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another video from Scatter in the Light Ministries and today we have a special guest. You will be hearing from her shortly. She has a very interesting story to share which I believe is a powerful testimony. But if you have not yet subscribed and joined Scatter in the Light Ministries family, please go ahead now and subscribe and hit the notification bell where you'll never miss our future uploads. Right beside me is a very good friend of mine, one who I consider to be my party. Yes, very good friend. And her name is? Olive Evans. Yes. And so you'll be hearing from her, and I hope and trust you'll be blessed by this testimony and if you know anyone who is seeking to practice country living i believe you should share this link with them especially seven day adventists mm -hmm. so sister olive yes brother Dorothy. where were you living before you made your move to the country i was actually living in florida Fort St. Lucie, Florida. I had my job. I had my house. And I was I was seemingly okay. Okay. And I, I never intended to leave there. I thought that was going to be my last move. Okay. That the next move would be to the morgue. <laughs> Interesting. So morbid, but <laughs> so Sister Olive, how long have you been living in the US? I was in the U.S. for about 22, 23 years. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, we, as Seventh-day Adventists, have been instructed in the Word of God and in the spirit of prophecy that we should not be living in the cities. And as a matter of fact, I have a little book here that is called Last Day Events. I'm just going to share... A few quotes and then we go back to Sister Olive. Here on page 76 under the chapter Country Living, it says that get out of the cities as soon as possible and purchase a little piece of land where you can have a garden, where your children can watch the flowers growing and learn from them lessons of simplicity and purity another paragraph tells us the lord calls for his people to locate away from the cities for in such an hour as he think not fire and brimstone will be rain from heaven upon these cities and as i'm reading this i remember sodom and gomorrah proportionate to their sins will be their visitation when one city is destroyed let not our people regard this matter as a light of fear and think that they may, if favorable, favorable opportunity offers, build themselves home in that same destroyed city. And we are seeing where fires have destroyed cities and God is saying that we need to get out. Don't even establish a home there. Get out. So, Sister Ali, mm -hmm. You are a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, I am. And you have heard the message about country living more than once, right? Yes. But, but, but what was that turning point in your life that caused you to make that move to the country? I didn't fully understand the country, country living that, you know, moving away from the cities. I thought it was okay if I had a piece of land, because the house I lived in had a nice size backyard where I could I could have had a nice garden. Okay. I could have had a nice garden. So I thought that was good enough. 
but you know later on and doing further studies and what was going to happen i think um that study we did with elder parts the great reset yes that kind of like put things in perspective for me and to realize that where i am is not good enough okay so did he do a study about when money fails as well yes he did he did um the great reset when money failed but that one was later okay so basically those two presentations by ella parks got you thinking and acting yes okay so 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 what took place in the world was there a shift in the world that opened your eyes that you know florida is not really the place for you to be um it was it had to on which one of the studies again one of them where you know what was happening current events at the time mm -hmm. because that time um donald COVID. Co covid had started yes. and um and there was this lockdown and when the lockdown started i was home i was alone well i lived alone but i was home and thinking what if this is the the siege I don't have not even a leaf of life outside to go eat. Wow. This doesn't make any sense. And it really hit me. It really hit me at that time. And I said, no, I really have to think about something else. But then that thought left me. And it was later on during the study where it came back again. And it just like, you know, you had all these things now putting together and realizing that it only makes sense. Amen. So, while you're speaking, I'm thinking about Lot. Because <laughs> Lot, when he got the, the message to leave the city, he just didn't leave. He delayed. Mm -hmm. And for him to leave, he was actually pulled out. By the angel. By the angel. I, I say that to say this, that God is merciful. Very. Merciful. Very, very. Merciful towards us. So, you're saying now, COVID came. You heard the two presentations, especially when money failed mm -hmm. and the great, reset. the great Reset. I'll see if I can find those presentations and post a link in the description down below for our viewers to take a look at those presentations. Because I met Ella Parks personally and I can tell you he was a man of the word and he knew God. He lived what he preached. Amen. And that what that's what Paul says to us mm -hmm. those who minister the gospel should live the gospel so you're thinking sister ali mm -hmm. that this is not the place for you to be with all the lockdowns going on so how did you now make that transition did you sell your house or did you just run away and leave it mm -hmm. tell us what happened well i decided that no I might have the opportunity to sell the house, whereas if I wait, I might have to leave everything behind me. Granted, I left almost everything behind me, but the, the long and short of it is that I, was, I started making plans to move. So the first thing on the agenda was getting rid of the house. Okay. So I had to start making it marketable, fixing it, staging it as they call it. So I changed things around, took down all my personal stuff where I could get, we could um, take the pictures to put, to put it on the market. Okay. So you are saying that you were convicted by God's spirit. Mm -hmm. That, you know, Florida is not the place for you to be. And now you have decided you're going to sell this house. So where were your thoughts? Did you know where you wanted to go? Were you praying? What, 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 what did you do? Yes, I was, I was in constant prayer. Because first of all, the whole idea of selling the house was overwhelming. I don't like to pack. I don't, I don't like doing stuff like that. And like I said, I'm alone. So first of all, I'm thinking, Lord, if I have to do this, I will. But I don't want to move 
unless it's your will. Amen. Because I don't want to have to come back and undo all of this after putting so much in. So I said, Lord, after we prayed and my sister and I were praying, and then I said, Lord, this is what I plan going forward. I'm going to put the house on the market. If, it, if it's not sold, because even when I was doing all of that, I'm thinking it could go either way because maybe the Lord doesn't want me to go. He'll stop it. So I said, Lord, take free reign. Stop it if you don't want me going. But if not, just let things flow. Okay. <laughs> that it did. Okay. So you put the house out there on the market. So after you put the house out there on the market, how long after was the house sold? And did you get what you were asking for or more or less? Okay. Well, I could safely say, because if you're thinking of the 24-hour day, I could safely say, it was sold the same day it was posted. Wow, that is a if miracle. If you're doing a 24-hour thing. Because yes. it went on the market like 8.30 um, that Saturday night. The, um, about 10 o'clock, the realtor called me to say, somebody, I had two people coming to look at it on the Sunday. So I was going to work and, um, you know, they could come in and look. So two people came in that Sunday. But in my mind, I was praying and I said, Lord, this is what we are going to be doing now. If the first person who comes in wants the house, then that to me is an indication that you're giving me the go ahead. Okay. So the Sunday they came and looked at it about 6.30 that evening. Um, the realtor called me. And she said, the, um, the person who came in, she didn't tell me first yet because she, she doesn't know, okay. you know, my plan and our private talk. Mm -hmm. So she said, somebody came in and they want the house. They really like it and they want it. And they're making an offer. They're offering more wow. than what you're asking. So she said, but we, 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 we're not going to sign any papers yet. Let some more people look. Okay. So the, that was Sunday. So somebody came in to look at look Monday and somebody came in on Tuesday. And Wednesday evening, I signed the contract. And then I asked her, let me ask you, was the person who, who wants it, was the person the first one to come in? Mm -hmm. And she said, yes. Wow. So that for me was confirmation. From mm -hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. That this house must go. Yes. And it went. Okay. So to God be the glory. So you are saying this the, the following day after the house was put out there on the market, it was sold. And not just sold, but for more than what? You were selling mm -hmm. to God be all the glory. That so, was I praised for. Amen. So, 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 Sister Olive, what did you do with those furniture? Did you ship them to your now country home? No, that was my intention. But some, if a sequence of events, it ended up where I actually gave everything away. What? Mm -hmm. You gave everything away. Acts 20, verse 35, tells us that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So, the house is sold. Mm -hmm. So, where were you now thinking to, to acquire property to establish your country home? I was thinking of North Florida, where, you know, you have more land space. So, you'd think of probably like a five-acre property and all that. But in the back of my mind, I'm saying, Lord, you know I am single. Yes. To move away to somewhere where I don't know anybody and me being a single woman, uh, that's not sitting too well with me. So I'm depending on you to lead. Yes. Because I don't know anything and I know that you have all the information that's necessary. 
So I'm trusting you with this. So I continue to pray because the house is sold, but we still need. So I'm looking online and I'm looking in Jamaica. I'm looking in um in the US. In Jamaica? Mm -hmm. But you said you're not coming back to Jamaica. I did but, say but, that. But somehow you are led to, to look. To, to look. Because okay. of course my sister was there nudging me because she wanted me back home. Back home. So she was encouraging. She, well, as a matter of fact, this, all, all of this now is happening in 2020. Yeah. From 2015, she's been at me to come and I keep telling her, I'm not interested. I'm not moving back to Jamaica. I'm not. Yes. So, you know, and she, so she, she, she kept at it, at it, at it. But we were praying together and then I said, Lord, you, you just need to indicate to me where you want me to go so I can move forward. So one morning I was like, it was in twilight, still praying. Cause like every time, like I wake up, I'm like, Lord, you know, I need to know where to go on. And, and one morning I, I, I got up and I was like in that twilight where half asleep, half awake. And just like in front of me was this big Jamaican flag. Okay. So I said, Lord, <laughs> I take it that it means Jamaica. Yes. So then I told my sister and then we prayed about it again. And then we started looking. But then I still don't know. I still don't know. Okay, but before you go further, you'd mentioned that you are single. And I know one of the challenge that Seventh-day Adventist single females tend to have is that, oh, I'm single, so I cannot make my move into the country. So how would you encourage our single sisters out there that, you know, God um, provided for me and he allowed me to make that move. He can do it for you. How would you encourage that single sister of ours? No, we, we have to. We, we, you can't go in this half-hearted. You have to understand that God knows your position. He asks you to do it. He's not going to ask you to do something that he will not equip you to do. Amen. He doesn't work like that. Amen. So you have to, you have to trust him. Amen. And so I, I, I know I'm working with him. So I'm going. I don't know who, where I'm going to go. I don't know who I'm going to be next to. I have none of that information. But I'm going. And for some reason, and this is like out of character for me. Because I'm not usually so forceful. But nobody could tell me anything about I'm going. And I'm not entertaining any little talk. Any, you know? No. I am going because this is what God expects of me. After I've done my part, then the rest is up to him. Amen. So it was a partnership and I'm telling him, Lord, this is it. Amen. And it is said, if it is God's will, it is God's bill. And too many of us, we decide where we want to go, not allowing God to choose for us where we ought to go. Think about that. So I hope you are encouraged that if God did it for Sister Olive, he can do it for you. So Sister Olive, the house is sold, the furniture are given away, but you are still in America. So where did you stay? Who? who? I stayed with my daughter, daughter in North Carolina. I stayed with my daughter there for a little bit. Okay. Kind of like find out where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing and whatever. And it was some bonding time with my grandson. So it worked. Okay. So where did you actually found the, the property now to establish your country home? Well, after I got to Jamaica, I still didn't know where I was going. Mm -hmm. So the day when I got to the airport, my sister was even late in picking me up because I had sent her to go look at her property. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> We're in some bush. I was there, friends, I can tell you. We go far, far in the bush. Bush, bush. <laughs> when you want to say bush, but anyhow. Yes. So that didn't work out. So I came, I came with, 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 with hope. Yes. And so I stayed with my sister because she offered me that, you know, this was her contribution to me that I'd stay with her and move from there. So I would, that was my base until I established 
my place. Okay. So others were looking out for you and you were looking as well. Right. Because there's a um, friend of mine and he and his wife, they were also looking and they were looking in Jamaica. So we, 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 what we did, we said, okay, whoever found something, you know, we're both looking. So if I found something, I would try to get enough where we can share. And, and if they found something, it would be enough for us to share. And, and look at it. Now, this is like a semi-community somewhat because then I would not be alone. Okay. So you hear that? So, so God, God worked, worked that out. For you as a single exactly, woman. Exactly. Exactly. You hear that, friends? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that worked that out. So when I got now, he, he, he was the one who, who found it. No, that couple was the one who found it. Because they knew somebody who had, they knew the person before and he had a piece of land and they spoke about it. And so he said, you know, he'll talk to his lawyer and then get back. So he called, when my friend called me, I'm like, oh, tell me you found a, 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 a property. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what he was saying, but, you know, it just, it just came out. Tell me you found it. And he laughed and he said, yes, I need for you to go and look at this property. And so, and that started. Okay. So, in making the transition, Sister Alice, mm -hmm. were there, I, you, I know you said you were praying, mm -hmm. but were there any time you cried or you felt discouraged? You know, tell us what really happened. Well, there were tears. There were tears. There were tears. And it's okay to cry? Yes, it's okay. It's okay. There were tears I um, and again as a single person because you, you really can't although I have this this family but they're taking care of their business they can't take up my 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 responsibility and you know you're looking about yours and you know so mm -hmm. you know so there were there were there were areas where I felt um, for want of a better word cheated you know, when you're building, all kind of stuff happens. And, you know, so there were disappointments there. And, you know, I, I, I sometimes, sometimes I felt like alone. I had to be like praying and Lord, help me. I don't want to, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. And, and then, you know, and there was this one particular time where I was talking to the builder and he was like really, really obnoxious. And, um, I spoke to my brother about it and my brother is he has a short fuse he, he doesn't have tolerance for um, things like that so I spoke to him about it and I spoke to as a matter of fact not him I spoke to my other brother but he couldn't come so he's sending now this brother and I was just like I was afraid so I kept praying about it and you know, because I, I, I didn't want anything happening there. So we prayed about it. And then every message that came, like somebody sent you text, everything was saying, go forward, go forward, go forward. And that is why even today when I see like some things, like there were lots of things that could be better with the building itself. But every time I see that, I said, Lord, I spoke to you before everything so there must be something mm -hmm. in this for me mm -hmm. so basically the, you have seen god's providence yes in guiding you forward yes as, as you go okay but before you you move on let me read another quote from last day events page 78 it says it is time for our people to take their families from the cities into more retired localities Else, many of the youth and many also of those older in years, yes, friends, will be ensnared and taken by the enemy. Over on page 79, it says, The Lord desires his people to move into the country where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruits and vegetables and where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God in nature. Take your families away 
from the cities is my message. So Sister Ali, mm -hmm. so that family was looking out for you. They found the land mm -hmm. and that was uh, it, enough for you to get a piece. Yes. And that family today is your neighbor. Yes. Isn't God amazing? Yes. So, so we look out for each other, you know, you know, if in the event when, when, um, when I first came, it was because I never knew there were so many nights. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I came the first night I slept here, I heard all Oh, kind... whoa, whoa, hold on. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. Sister Ali. <laughs> So you 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 said you sold your house in Florida. Mm -hmm. Was that house really yours, or was it still being paid for? It was still being paid for, and it was because I I it was just a short time I had it. Okay, I had it for three years. Three years. All mm -hmm. right. So where you're living now in the country in Jamaica, mm -hmm. is it your home fully paid for? Yes, fully paid for. Fully paid. For. And you're not in debt. No. Okay. No. Wow, isn't no, God amazing? God is good. God is good. Okay, so you got the land. Mm -hmm. Now you need to build. Right. So, how did you decide now, like, what kind of structure you are going to put up? I already had in my mind that it was going to be a two-bedroom, two-bathroom. That was already settled. I wasn't going any bigger. Okay, but in, in terms of the material, blocks are... Um, oh, um, cause I wanted something, something quick and you know, my, my neighbor was all, so it, the houses look like almost like twin houses okay. because, um, he was always doing research on material and whatever. And, you know, he would share and we would, we would look at it and, you know, how the cost of working out, the cost to build, what we were going to be needing. And cause it, it's a low budget cause we don't have a lot of. As a matter of fact, when I, I, before we got this, I was looking at a property and what the, what the person was asking for the, for the, there was an old structure on it, but it would need lots of work. Okay. And what they were asking was almost the amount of money that I had. There was just a little left over. And as I sat with my sister and we were talking about it and talking about the price of the house and everything, I didn't even tell her out how much money I had. I wrote it on a piece of paper and gave it to her. I showed it to her. And then she said, she said she looked at me. She was just, she just felt so sorry for me that she cried. Wow. Just to think that what I had wouldn't be enough. Yes, because as you said, you didn't own that house in Florida. No. So you didn't. So it was get just all, the equity. It yes. was just the equity for the three years yeah, I had it. You didn't get all and, that money. Uh, and I didn't have. I didn't have like savings or anything. I did. I didn't have anything. So it's like, and I can see God in that where you don't have to. You don't have to have like everything mm -hmm. you just, need, you just to need to be willing and obedient yes and god and he worked it he, he worked it all because i said to him lord this is what i have this is it and this is what i i i am I, I'm, I'm going after so you're going to and i'm telling you he worked in ways people who people who i i haven't spoken to in years just out of the blue, called me and said, okay, I'm sending you some money. Just like that. Just like that. And it was what could assist in... At that time, because wow. I remember one time when, I, when we were doing the ceiling and the, 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 guy, the guy who was going to do the ceiling said to me, you're going to need a five-gallon bucket of paint. And I said to him, I don't have the money. He said, don't worry, you will get it. Amen. And that same, in that, a day later, I got a call that I should go to the Western Union and pick up some money, okay. enough money to buy the paint. So in building your country home in Jamaica, you mm -hmm. see where God provided all that you need. Mm -hmm. So 
destructors of did you wait until the the structure was completed before you actually move in um what, what happened tell us well um what what i what 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 i had done the money that i had could only build the shell so the four the four walls were at least up yeah. And there was a partition wall. The, what, the, the, the um, material, what, what they call this? They call it um, composite composite timber. Okay. It, 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 it's composite, you know, different things so put like together. Fit, fit, right, it's like it together. lock almost, it, they lock into each other. The panels lock into each other. The truth be told though, if I were to do this again, I wouldn't use this. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't use it. Well as you said you wanted something quick so right. this would be faster than building right. a block. Right. Structure. Definitely much faster. Okay. So mm -hmm. you said that money you have couldn't finish everything. So right. so you moved in? I moved in. And what were you sleeping on? I was at first I had a piece of ply. Wow. And some blocks and the mattress and that. So hold on now. You have your comfortable home in Florida, first world country, Sister Ali. Mm -hmm. Your nice, is it a pasta period bed? And no, your uh, memory foam. Memory foam. <laughs> you hear that, friends? And Sister Ali left all of that to come and sleep and what? And a block, block, block and, and piece of ply. Piece of ply. And, a, and I, had, um, I had a piece of memory foam um, about four inches thick. And it was the size of a twin bed. So that was initial. That was So so Sister Olive, mm -hmm. what did your family think about you? If you did they, you know, the thought cross their mind that you're going nuts or something? Cause you left that beautiful home in Florida and that luxurious life, you know, everything you needed at your fingertips, you're in a good job, you had a nice car, and you're going in the bush in Jamaica. And you know you won't have running water and all of these things. How did they? I'm probably just one family member who, who had, who had some like you know. Are you sure you want to do that? Aren't you sure you want to come back? You know, just one, one, one sister. The reason why I'm asking this question, you know, friend, because we have to be careful who we share our dream with. And especially when God tells us to do something, we need to obey God. And understand that it's God talking. And once God says so, it doesn't matter what exactly. anybody else has to say. And even if you lose some form of comfort, once you are in God's will, then that's okay. You know, the amazing thing, <laughs> I used to laugh because I didn't even have curtain. I mean, the doors were in, the windows were in, the frame was up. The ceiling, um, the ceiling was done now, cause my sister said she 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 has to she has to make um she's going to make a sacrifice and help me with the ceiling because it would it would be too cold and you know with the wind coming and we're on top of the hill and you know so she 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 she, she did that and she also contributed with the electrical stuff because okay. we had that done so when i came in now the ceiling was up the doors were in the windows were in and there 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 was just this doorway for the partition to go into what is now my bedroom so in the night time it was so funny yes I, tell us <laughs> now what kind of creatures you heard <laughs> no no before we get to the creatures I had to put a piece of ply, I put a piece of ply at one window. One night I put a piece of cellotex at the window in the middle of the night. I heard this big sound. The cellotex fell on, on top of me on the bed. I turned around and looked and saw it was just this. I just turned around and continued sleeping. Because you're in the country. Because you're safe. I just, I just turned around. And Psalm 34 and 7 tells us the angel of the Lord encamped around and bought them and came and delivered them. And so, um, but for some reason, the floor was undone. It was rough, just rough cast. The, um, even the shower area, it was, it was made, but still rough. And 
I had to tote the water in to bathe and do all of that. But there was this peace that I looked forward to going in in the nighttime. I felt so, I mean, when, when, when it's almost like, you know, when you're thinking happy time now or what, that was how I felt every night going through that door. Amen. And this wasn't a feeling you had in Florida. Oh, no. It was the opposite. When it was time for me to go to bed, I always felt like sad. So I'm, we're, there's a passageway that led to the bedroom. And every time I got there, there was this wave of sadness. That would like would, would be like you're stopping to get to to pick up something. So I would as leaving the kitchen to go in now, I would just go in, just feel that little sadness. But God is so good. Amen. By the time I would get in, I I I'll be out. So you wouldn't trade this life for the life you had in Florida. Oh no, oh no. As a matter of fact, no, I pity my friends. Who are there in Florida? Yes, and wow. and who who work the same the same job that I work and the stresses that they have and where they feel like they have to do this because they have this bill to pay they have to pay the mortgage they have to do this they have to do that car note, and car like. note everything and still be at work and you know yeah no I wouldn't I wouldn't trade as a matter of fact, I didn't even know that I was so close to where I could get collect social security. I didn't know. Okay. I was bent on going that that was my concern. God is going to take care of me. Okay. So life in Florida was much more comfortable. In you terms know, of material. Yeah, you turn on the tap to you have your water mm -hmm. and you know you have your electricity, but mm -hmm. here you are off grid. I'm yeah. off grid, but I was the same friend who I told you about. Yeah. He was looking into um, solar energy, and so I, as he is looking about his, and I'm very nosy. So I would ask, "What you doing? How you doing? How how do I get that?" Yeah. So so you actually move here in the dark? No. No. Oh, no. When you came. When I came, it was it was it was yeah, yeah, but solar. I, I came, when I came, I ha I brought all the, I bought it um, while, I while I was in North Carolina. Okay. I bought all the fittings for the, the only thing I didn't buy was, were the panels because they were big and bulky. So I wasn't going to do that. And I mean, I could get it here. So when I came here, I bought the panels. So before I came up here, I had, I had it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had it. I had it set up. All right, so let me share another quote from the book, Last Day Events. It says, Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should know. Begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. So Sister Olive said when the solitex fell down, she just remained um, yeah. um, sleeping. I was not because okay. she was in the country, she was free from her enemies. But I just want to say... That I went to the farm store recently and I was told that there are no corn seeds in Jamaica. There are no corn seeds on the world market. And here in the council, we are told we should get out of the cities and we should go where into the country where we can raise our own provision. Why? For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. Revelation 13 tells us a time is coming and we will not be able to buy ourselves. So we are actually seeing the rapid changes in our world. Digital passport, digital ID, digital currency, and the list goes on and on. And cash cannot be traced or controlled. But when you have digital money, then it can be controlled and we will not be able to buy nor sell. 
my mind goes back to when COVID was here in Jamaica and St. Catherine was locked down. The people who live there had to go to the supermarket alphabetically. What do I mean? If your surname begins with A, you were the first family to go out and shop. So what about people whose surnames are S and W and Z and all of these things? They will be last to leave their homes to go out and shop. And what happened, many of these people, when they went out to collect money from Western Union and these places, money was finished. And if they get the money and went to the supermarket, the food was finished. I remember I watched the news, a car came with some um, farm produce. A lady was there saying, not even an onion she had in her fridge. And as the car came and they opened the trunk, everything went. So we are seeing, friends, that when a crisis hit, food will run out. And that is why we are encouraged by God through Sister White. We need to get out. So Sister Ali, mm -hmm. so you're in the country, you're establishing a nice, comfortable country home. Do you plan... Work in progress. Work in progress, fine. But at least you are here. Yes. You are practicing country living mm -hmm. and you have planted some crops. What do you have on your property? Well, I have, I got the land with the avocados. Yeah. I have three avocado trees. I have two breadfruit trees. Those I got with the land. The avocado hasn't started bearing yet, but the breadfruit, I had quite a bit from it this, wow. this season. Mm -hmm. And I remember and, you shared with me as well. Oh, yes. Very delicious breadfruit. Yes, yes. And so in I, Florida, you'd have to buy those, don't it? I, I wouldn't buy it. Because there was no guarantee it was going to be good. So okay. I, 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 but I basically anything you need there, you have to you go have to, to the store and yes. buy. So yes. you have the privilege now of planting. Uh, and picking. And picking. That there is this, this this thing about reaping. Yes. Like, you know, I go down, I one, one day in particular I went, I picked a pumpkin. I cut down a, 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 a bunch of plantings, Planting. a bunch of banana. Banana. Cut some callaloo. Callaloo. And um, what else? Pick a breadfruit. All right, you hear that, friends? Like so she one... basically have a, a, a complete meal there. Yeah, I could eat. Yeah. I've planted <laughs> peas where I was able, you know, just had a little. I, I had gotten a, a, a um, bungalow of peas, green peas. Yes. And so there were some dried in it. So I got like a handful or so I planted it. And I was able to eat from that. I was able to reap it and, and eat. I have beans. An almond. No. The yes, almond tree. Yes, yes, yes. I saw two, two almond trees outside. Yes, yes. and the, the one there is bearing already. All I right. did not know. So you know. have your nuts. You can get your yeah. protein from yeah. your, your almonds. And you can use almonds to make milk mm -hmm. or whatever you want mm -hmm. to do with it. So God has been faithful. All right, we are going to wrap this video up. But I tell you, this has been... Such a wonderful time for us to be here talking to me, Pari, you know, <laughs> Sister Olive, as she shares her testimony where God has taken her from to where she is. I hope all of you viewing this video will be encouraged, will be inspired that if God did it for Sister Olive, he can also do it for you because God's bidding is is enabling he will not mm -hmm. tell us to do something that he knows we cannot do and as a matter of fact what he commands us to do he will give us the strength and the power to do it so there you have it friends let me just pause <laughs> sorry <laughs> just a little longer because i wanted to share this because this was this this was um ezekiel 34 oh yes is, oh I, 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 I was to ask her this question. When you are in the country and you be, become fearful, which passage of scripture do you read? Please, my bad, forgive me. Tell us, Sister Olive, when you are in the country and you become fearful, even though we know 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 tells us God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. But at times, that fear will come over us, but thank God for his word. So which scripture do you use to encourage and comfort yourself? Ezekiel 34, reading from 25 to the end. Um, do we have time to read it? It's not. Just, just share a few verses. Um, well, let me find it. Um, 
and I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in their land and shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And it continues. So you can go ahead and read Ezekiel 34, 25 to the end. That was like very encouraging for me. Amen. And I hope you have been encouraged too. Thank you, Sister Olive. My pleasure, Pari. It's so good to have you. And I hope and trust we can do this again. Please go ahead and share the link. You know, help us to scatter the light, to encourage others who are thinking about country living and who doesn't have the means. I believe you will be encouraged as you watch this video that God can do it for you as he has done it for Sister Olive. Sister Olive, mm -hmm. do you mind praying for us? Please? Not at all. Okay. Kind Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity. We thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. And because we trust you, we can just leave everything in your hands. So we place the, the, the viewers, even now, those who are contemplating the making the country move, just help them, Lord, to understand that you are God and you are able to take them through any situation. So just be with them, we pray. Be with Brother Gordon and the Scatter in the Light Ministries, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Sister Olive, you didn't tell us about the night creatures. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of sound. All kinds of sound. All kinds of sound. Yeah. But God, I, 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 I just leave everything to God. I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of those scaredy, scaredy. No. And Sister Olive, are you afraid of lizards? The croakers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, friends. Thank you for joining us. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.